you guys welcome back for another real housewives of potomac review in today's video we are going to do things a little bit differently we are going to do a real housewives of potomac power ranking because i feel like after the amount of episodes that we have gotten we can do a power ranking we can start from the bottom and go to the top of where all the ladies stand because i am going to say let's just start by giving a review of this season thus far this season has really been a lot of fun to me i I enjoy watching Real Housewives of Potomac and it has just been a really long time since I have done that. Do I think this is the best season of a Housewives show ever? No, but I do think Potomac is returning back to form and it's it's good. It's enjoyable to watch. You know, you get some shade, you get some reads. Nothing seems all that deep. So I'm having a fun time with the show. I feel like there's something to build on. There's something to build on. There's relationships here that I want to see. Another thing I've really enjoyed, I've gotten to really enjoy getting in the business of other people. Getting in the business. I was so tired of talking about Robin and Juan. I was so tired of talking about Candace and her man. I was tired of Monique and her man. I was so tired of Ashley and her man. I was, uh, I was so tired of Karen and Uncle Ben. I was just so tired of hearing about the same people over and over and over again beating a dead horse. It was just time for some new blood and we got those new bloods. I have to give credit to the Real House of wives of potomac casting i like this idea of bringing on a batch of girls and seeing who works because not only do we have two new girls in Kay and stacy but we also have like some friends of and jassy and jacqueline who come on to the show who are all there you know to get things riling and get things going that is nice to have a big group and i hope real housewives of atlanta is really taking notice to this that we do not have to say what the same people we do not have to stay with the same people we do not have to stay with the same girls we can open this show up we can bring on a batch of people because what we really want to see is new and different dynamics so i am enjoying this season of real housewives potomac it is nice to see what have been some things that i have not enjoyed about real housewives of potomac i do think that things are lingering a little too long and this could just be with less money being funneled into the Housewives series. Potomac is still not like this show that everybody and their mama tunes into. Potomac is still a second tier franchise. And then we know that Housewives isn't as big as it once was. But like I feel like we stay in scenes way too long on Real Housewives of Potomac. Like, And a, one scene will take up half of an entire episode. And that's absolutely annoying. I think everything that happened with Giselle and her daddy event, all of that took too much time to really come together wendy and her birthday took too long to come together and i think the biggest issue lake norman we stayed at lake norman like three and a half episodes we were at lake norman for three and a half episodes there's just absolutely no reason for all of that that is just too long to be someplace you could tell the girls was getting tired of it you could tell there wasn't nothing to goddamn do at lake norman there was just it wasn't it just it just was too long so i do think we could get quicker 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 quicker, quicker moments going on here and i do think there needs to be a little bit more producing a little bit more going on in these scenes for people to have stuff to do because it it does feel like a lot we are just plopping the ladies in a, a room and being like talk plop talk here's a dinner table boom talk do this boom talk. so we could have a little bit more activities going so the show could feel a little bit more fluid that would be my only critique of the show thus far but other than that i'm enjoying myself especially because when usually you have a show with this many ladies you're like cut this person cut this person cut this person and i do have that we're going to get into my power rankings but I do think that, you know, everybody is here. Everyone is, you know, at least trying a little bit. It doesn't feel overwhelming. That is what I would say. Having all of these ladies, it does not feel feel overwhelming and that could also be a credit to the girls they're not heavily trying to talk over one another it's not hard to follow storylines it's not hard to follow beef i just think we have a nice good opening the last two episodes the reason why i really don't want to come and talk about them anymore like in depth is because nothing really happened on these episodes that i really need to get into the nitty-gritty of that i just can't get into during the power rankings like i said i'm over being at lake norman let's get the hell 
off, off of Lake Norman. So in the power rankings, the person who is dead last, not moving up in any way, is Jacqueline. Jacqueline we have seen before, so I am not even going to cop a plea that Jacqueline is new. We have seen Jacqueline before. Jacqueline is best friends to Mia, and she is dead last in the power rankings. Jacqueline, you tried. This show ain't for you. Jacqueline is just number one, not interesting. What is interesting about Jacqueline? Does Jacqueline have, like, you know, the clothes you want to see? Does Jacqueline have the life you want to see? Does Jacqueline have the man you want to see? Does What does Jacqueline have that you just need to come back for more? None. When it came down to the table and she had to get into a read session with Karen, it was time to go back and forth with Karen. She couldn't hang. Karen brought up her husband and all his counts. I had no clue Jacqueline husband or boyfriend, baby daddy, whoever he is. I had no clue of all of his drama. And Jacqueline, you ain't have an answer. You ain't have an answer for any of that. You started to cop pleas for why he had 20 goddamn cases against his ass. And it it just looked real, real bad. And like, so what, what Jacqueline, you just couldn't keep up when it was that. Jacqueline's worst offense is Mia. Someone needs to tell Jacqueline that Mia does not make her look good. Jacqueline goes to bat for Mia in a way Mia does not go to bat for her. M you are Mia's flunky. You are Mia's flunky. Mia likes you as a flunky. Anytime Mia is trying to protect you, it is out of self. It is, it is out of her trying to protect herself. She, when you come for Jacqueline, you're coming for Mia because Mia knows you are her flunky, Jacqueline. So it's just like if y'all coming for my flunky, you really trying to come for me because that's exactly what they're doing. And so, uh, Jacqueline, it just makes you look worse. It makes you look worse. It makes you look like you cannot live without Mia. You need Mia. Every time Mia says something, you're going to toe and being like, yeah, that's how I feel. Anytime someone comes for you, Jacqueline, Mia comes running up behind. You guys do not get freaking fracked. It doesn't get freaking frag. It just gives two buffoons. It really just gives two buffoons. And Jacqueline, you look the worst in all of this because it just looks like you're, you know, you're riding onto Mia's coattails. You don't really have anything interesting beyond Mia. I don't understand why on the Lake Norman trip would you not try to find other friends? Why would you not try to make friends with Kay? Why would you not try to make friends with Jassy, Stacy, some of the new girls so you could have something that has nothing to do with Mia so people could see you as kind of a wild wild card. Will she go against Mia? Will she not? But you just look like Mia's flunky and you can't hang. You can't hang Jacqueline. Something is really, really bizarre about her. The way she gets when um, Mia is hanging out with any... It's just weird. It's just really weird and really strange. Your husband got a weird case. Why is he around? Like, it's just all bad. It's just all bad, Jacqueline. You can't hang. Karen got into you. Karen clears you as well. She got into you and she clears you. So Jacqueline, you go dead last in the power rankings. But you have some company because you the next person should be tied with you, but I'm going to put them ahead of you because Ashley, this is a bad outing for Ashley. Ashley looks crazy this season. We've seen Ashley look crazy, but even in Ashley's craziest of moments, it felt like Ashley had some control over it. It felt like Ashley had some shame. Like, she just had no shame. Like, Ashley was willing to do anything. She there was no shame to Ashley. But Ashley in this outing is just like a shell of her once self. And I think Ashley is at her most annoying when Ashley tries to like be messy. Ashley tries to be messy, but she isn't fully committed to being messy. So the thing about um, K and K's scar, let's be very clear. K got attacked by Ashley's friend. And the only reason why Ashley is bringing up that scar is because it seems like Ashley is still friends with the girl that attacked K. And so she wanted to make it seem like Kay was lying about something and Ashley this is why nobody fucking likes you this is why nobody fucking likes you because you're nasty you're nasty and you're weird and the thing about Ashley is Ashley back in the day when she was younger could kind of stand in her shade she could kind of stand in being messy the fact that Kay came at you and was like you don't get to talk to me about my scar and what's going on with my scar in my humble opinion Kay has been far too nice to you Kay has been far too nice to you I would give you my ass to kiss if I was K, but um, you, she said, don't talk to her about her scar, and you sitting here like, why me? Why you doing this to me? Why you bringing this up to me? Like, why you being because 
because you were being messy, Ashley. You were being messy. You were trying to say Kay made all this shit up. Kay don't have a scar on her face, especially when everybody at the table acknowledges that she does have a scar on her face. The second time she was trying to be messy, and this is how you know she just doesn't like Kay. She just doesn't like Kay because of what happened with her friend. Um, when Mia was bringing up Kay having a drug dealer ex-boyfriend, um, Ashley was being like, yeah, that's a rumor going around that you have a drug dealer ex- Ashley, why the fuck do you care? Ashley get to talk about somebody ex? Ashley get to talk about somebody ex? Is that what we're doing? Once again, being messy, trying to be a part of it, but not really being able to find her footing in the mess. Ashley got called out for being messy and nasty last year with that shit with Wendy and Aneka. So she's trying to, you know, keep herself clean, keep herself, but... You just look bad. You just look like you can't commit to it. At least Ashley, who committed to being messy and annoying, was that. At least she was that and you knew she was that, which is what Mia is being this year. But Ashley, you can't even stay there. And so what she looks like is also a flunky. She's running behind Mia, and then which is just so lowbrow. It's one thing for Jacqueline to do it. She knows uh, Mia from around the way. Why are you running behind Mia, Ashley? You look pathetic. But the reason why you were doing that down at Lake Norman, because your real master, Giselle, wasn't around so that's the new thing Ashley has started to carry she has started to carry this thing where she's like Giselle's little flunky you know her and Giselle are gonna be besties it's a bad look Ashley it's a bad look but I think Ashley's biggest offense Ashley's biggest offense is that Ashley once again won't give us a storyline Ashley once again won't give us a storyline why does it take other people bringing out something in Ashley so when they're all sitting around the pool and Stacy is talking about her divorce and everybody is talking about their man and what's going on with their man and what's going on why does people have to bring information out of Ashley like Ashley what's going on with your divorce what's going on with your kids are you getting money what why are people bringing information out of you why are you not offering this information because you're supposed to like Ashley Ashley is just like not fit for this show anymore. It just doesn't work anymore. It doesn't make sense anymore. I look around and I'm like, why is Ashley here? What is going on? Like you just don't have any footing and it's just, you look bad. You look bad on this show, Ashley. The next person we have is Mia. Mia, I also think this is not a good outing for you this season. If I want to give Mia something, if I want to give Mia something, I think Mia is okay with being the villain. I think she's okay with being a villain. Every season of A Housewife needs a villain when the show is good. And therefore, if Mia Mia can take the heat of being the villain, Mia has no shame. That's the thing that works against and for Mia. Mia has absolutely zero shame. And so, like, she doesn't care that people are going to say shit about her. She doesn't care that people don't like her. She doesn't care that she's a liar. She doesn't care that she's hurting anyone's feelings. So, like, she makes a good villain in that way. But also, at the same time, because you know none of this is serious to Mia, it's hard to take Mia serious as a person. Mia started off on the wrong foot when it comes to who her, ba- who her child's daddy is. That's nuts. It is absolutely nuts to offer to the show that you might not know who your kid daddy is. That shows that she you are just clinging for something. You are clinging for something. You are clinging for some type of storyline. I think that is absolutely crazy, especially because we see your kids on the show. We see your kids on the show and you are sitting here talking about you don't know who your kid's daddy is. So that was weird. And then when you got pressed on it, you cried about it. And it's just like, oh, okay, Mia. And then now Mia has her flunky. She brought all her friends to Lake Norman. They were irrelevant her bringing up that three-year-old tea about karen and karen cheating on her husband i'm gonna say this and y'all can take it as your will no one cares nobody cares if karen is cheating on her old ass husband karen has paid the piper karen was too good for him when she got with him now that she's the one who brings in the money in that house no one cares no one cares none of y'all have any valid proof that this is something that happens even though i believe it's something that happens um so like why why what and it's three years old it is three years old no one cares like no and we've seen that nobody is going to hold Karen's feet to the fire for this thing because Karen is going to skate she is going to slide and she's going to lie about it none of you have any real proof so what are we doing here so Mia bringing it up is just like okay Mia it's just another desperate attempt for you to bring someone down and then a horrible moment for Mia comes with Mia coming for Kay 
Mia coming, number one, K having a drug dealer ex-boyfriend. Everybody at that table, raise your hand if your man was was not involved in some, you know, sketchy behavior. Like, everybody got to put their goddamn hands down. Like, please, y'all the ones to talk about somebody man having charge. Eddie is the only person who Wendy probably can raise her hand. Wendy probably, but the rest of y'all, <laughs> the rest of y'all shut the hell up. That was really, really weird. And it just seemed like Mia was trying to, like, attack somebody. Now, I will say, me and Kay do have a nice little good banner going on, banter going on. At the table, when Kay was talking about her ex and Mia started going in, and she said, Mia, shut the fuck up. I, I think Mia and Kay could kind of be fun riffing, riffing off of one another. But it just wasn't a good look. It was like, what are you doing this for? And when Karen gagged alive about Jacqueline Man and Mia was over here being like, so now we bringing up Mia, like, Mia be serious be serious you the main one bringing up somebody man so no 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 i do not think mia is having a good season mia can have good moments mia can have good moments but like mia tighten it up loosen like mia mia's all over the place this season mia needs to tighten it i there i can take something from every part of her i like her giving us a personal storyline i like her being a little bit messy i can even lean into mia being a villain but can we tighten it up a little bit? You're doing a little bit of everything. Even the, um, her showing everybody Karen's charges and stuff. Like, look what she got charged with. Look what she got charged with. Look what she got charged with. It's all a lot. It's all a lot. And I just don't think any of that is needed at all. The next person that I am going to put on this list is Jassy. Is that how you pronounce her name? Jassy. Jassy is really good. <laughs> Jassy is really good on this show. Jassy seems to not be fully taking any sides. She seems to be trying to carry the middle going on here. We have gotten some good reads from Jassy on this show. She really got Ashley together a little bit. I'm enjoying Jassy on this show. She got Jacqueline together as well. I'm enjoying her on this show. But the reason why I wanted to discuss Jassy is you made a misstep, doll. And that misstep is trying to come up with a story that you did not need to come up with. So the thing is, Jassy's husband, he plays in the NFL. Child, I don't even know if he has a job anymore because the way Jassy was talking about it, he was, you know, in between some stuff, but it doesn't matter. He has two kids. He has two kids. I already told you I think Jassy is too young, too beautiful to be out here playing stepmom with the two kids. But, you know, do what you got to do. I don't know nobody's life. Um, and the car facts aren't adding up. The car facts are not adding up. Things are coming back a little bit off because he has two kids. The youngest kid is like a year old and they've been together for two years. Now, I don't know much about algebra, but I know that he had a baby on you. <laughs> I know that he had a baby on you. But the thing is what annoys me about this is that this is a lie that is kind of easy to like make sense of say he had a break baby say he had a break baby say you guys broke up and he got his baby mama pregnant and the thing is there actually still isn't any clarity in this i say he had a baby on her you but there's a lot of ways this could have happened number one Jassy could have just been the side chick he could have just been with his baby mama because i'm assuming what it seems like on the show his two kids are from the same woman. So they have like a two-year-old and a one-year-old, something like that. Right, right. So you could, he, she, Jassy could have just been the side chick. He could have just been with the baby mama the whole time and Jassy is the side chick. That's one option. Then you got the number two option where y'all broke up and he had a baby. Probably the best option for you to go with. Or number three, he just cheated on you like a lot of these dudes do. They go back to their baby mama. They go back to their baby mama a little bit. You know, they go to pick up the kid and they get to talk and they get the fool la la and all you know, some somebody is pregnant. But the way Jassy tells this story doesn't make any sense. She's come, like, come up with something. Come up with this is how this happened. This is how, I don't understand why she's committed to saying that they've been together for two years. That's the part that I don't understand. If we're gonna lie, let's think of a good 
good life. Why does she have to say that they're together for two years? I'm assuming maybe there's a photo of them from two years ago, so she wouldn't be able to explain the photo. But just be like, we was cool, we was friends, you know? We was hooking up, we were, we wasn't together together like that. Why not come up with that lie? That's what don't make sense to me. Like, why this lie in particular? Like, playing with the numbers. The numbers gonna number every single time. Like, it just don't make any sense. Like, he, he had sex with his baby mama 19 months ago. I don't know what else to, I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. 19, 20, 20 months ago. <laughs> Maybe I, clearly I don't know much about algebra. Like 20 months ago, he had sex with somebody that wasn't you. And y'all been together for 24 months. So like clearly something, something in the milk ain't clean. So just come out and say it. And sitting there and having to come up with a story for it tells you everything was going on. But I'm with Giselle on this one. Just say the, say the man cheated on you. Just say the man cheated. Well, we not going to blame you. <laughs> we not going to blame you for getting cheated on, girl. But, like, sitting here just lying about it just means, like, like, you're in denial. Like, that's the worst part. It's one thing to, like, be with a cheating man and that's you with a cheating man, right? We all looking at you like, girl, why you with that cheating man? It's another thing to make excuses for that cheating man. That goes back to Jacqueline making excuses for why her husband got all them goddamn cases and complaints. Like, just just be with the man. You don't got to come up with it. We, you, we, we, we going to talk about you regardless. So you don't even got to come up with all these lies and make us look at you like you crazy and that's what's going on with Jesse. just like girl it don't gotta be y'all so this is a little chink in her armor the next person i am going to put is giselle giselle would have been higher on my power rankings if not for lake norman giselle is not at lake norman and i don't miss her Giselle is not at Lake Norman and I totally forgot she was on the show the last two episodes I forgot she was on the show till she came back I was just like whoa Giselle is going and you never want people to see that they are better without you or not even better without you They can do without you because I actually don't necessarily believe they're better without Giselle because I will say without Giselle There is there is a mother missing <laughs> there is a mother missing there is someone that these women look to I don't know what Giselle has. I don't know Giselle personally, but I have listened to interviews or listened to content of people who do know Giselle and who have met Giselle. And all of them say the same thing. Giselle does have an essence about her, an aura about her, that you just want to like her. You want to like her. You want to be friends with her. You want to look to her everyone says this whether it be black women whether it be dude like they all say there is something about Giselle that does make you gravitate towards Giselle so therefore all of these women do look to Giselle I hate to say it they do they do and so like that is missing there was a little chaos and they were missing that nucleus a little bit so I will say that I will not say they're better without Giselle but I forgot Giselle was there for a minute Giselle's biggest issue why she is staying right here is is that Giselle we so tired of hearing about your kids nobody will say it so I'll say it Giselle we are so tired of hearing about your kids what else you got what else you got without them kids what you got Giselle you gonna have to give us something that's not about these kids we like your kids we love your kids beautiful kids what else you got they off to college now what else you got girl I don't want to hear no more of it so that's where she stays the next person here is going to be Wendy Wendy has made herself to number three in the power rankings. Wendy deserves uh, to live, love, and laugh. Wendy is in her live, love, laughs us uh, era, and I like that for Wendy. Wendy has gone through hell for the past two seasons with these women, and I'm enjoying Wendy a lot. I am enjoying Wendy's confessionals. Wendy is able to be a part of the mess, but not fully be in the mess. When she stuck up for Kay at the table, I love that scene so much, as she stuck up for her and I was like Wendy Wendy has a good vibe this is the Wendy that I've always wanted from Wendy no Wendy don't have shit going on Wendy don't have shit going on Wendy is not really attached to any of these ladies but in the last episode I was saying how it was weird that Wendy and Kay weren't talking to one another when Kay, Wendy was the one who introduced Kay to the group but look she came to bat for Kay I like that I loved it Wendy is good I like how Wendy was acting on her birthday Wendy seems to be moving on but she's forgiving but she's not forgetting 
Like, she's making it very clear. It's still fuck Giselle at any given moment. It's still fuck Wendy at any given moment. But you know what? This is a job. This is my only job. And I'm going to do this job to the best of my ability. She got Ashley together because Ashley needs to be got together. I'm enjoying Wendy. Wendy has moved to number three in my power rankings. The shocking number two. I know you're like, what the fuck, Kenya? The shocking number two is Karen. Karen last episode and the episode before, she carried. She carried. This is why Karen can never lose her crown. She can never lose her crown. Karen plays this game and she plays this game well. Karen realized quickly, oh, y'all gonna be on my back this season. Oh, I'm going to war this season. I'm going to war with these bitches this season. And she said, then let's fight. Then let's fight. Jacqueline, your man is this. Mia, your shit is this. Ashley, your shit is this. Let's talk. Another thing that is going unsaid about Karen, do you see how Karen is collecting minions? Do you see how Karen is collecting minions to go to war with? She got Kay, she got Stacy, she got um Jassy. She is collecting, then she got Wendy. She is collecting her minions to go to war. And that's what you're supposed to do. I've watched enough seasons of Survivor. Don't try to take from the top. Don't try to take from the top. You take from the bottom. You look for the people who need a home. And you bring them on your side because they'll be loyal. They're just looking for someone. And so everybody is being loyal to Karen. Karen cleared at that table. When she brought up Jacqueline and her man, talk about gagging the lie. Even back a few episodes ago when she brought up Ashley and Michael, talk about gagging the life because Karen is right. She's right. Y'all bringing up what I got going on. But when it's time for y'all, man, nobody wants to bring anything up. Now, all of a sudden, everybody can't talk. All of a sudden, we don't bring up people's man. So if y'all gonna bring up my shit, just know your shit is being brought up too. And that's how you're supposed to play it. You're supposed to show these girls, you can bring my stuff up, but yours gonna get brought up too. I did some research on you too, mama. I did some research on you too, and we can play this game. And that's really how you have to play it. When they were talking about on the balcony, how Karen was saying, like, this, Wendy was like, Karen is giving y'all a mask class on how to do it she really is this is how you have to play this game with them like when they come for you you gotta throw it right back onto them or they they not gonna leave you alone they not going to leave you alone let's go with number one number one goes to a newcomer it is stacy stacy is number one in the power rankings the reason why stacy has made her place to number one in the power rankings because she's new it to be new and to be liked the way that she is being liked by fans to have the outing she is having you gotta put her up there everyone who is calling her stiff and weird on the show like i said they are all gonna walk this back they are all going to walk this back at the reunion and be like we love stacy out of love stacy is good stacy is all is always trying to be on the right side she's coming from she's being kind and nice to everybody but it isn't coming off fake you can tell this is how Stacy is Stacy seems down for a good time I like that she's having this you know internal battle with Karen because Karen did do something awful by the way you guys she did and I like seeing Stacy instead of just going with you know having this battle like what's going on Karen how is all this going on should we be doing this should we be doing that I like her getting along with all of the girls I just just really really enjoy Stacy. The only thing Stacy got to tighten up a little bit is whatever the fuck is going on with TJ. Whatever the fuck is going on with TJ, don't do that again. <laughs> let 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 TJ not make another uh, debut on this show. I like her talking about what's going on in her marriage, what's going on in her life. I like everything that's going on. Stacy is a great newcomer. And those are the power rankings. So right now on the show, we seem to have two sides. You have the Ashley, Mia, Jizzy, Jacqueline side. Then you have the Kay, Wendy, Jassy, Karen side. Stacy leaning more towards the Karen side. Those seem to be our sides that are working out. They seem like a lot of fun. We seem like we have a lot of fun ahead of us. Anyways, that is my Real Housewives of Potomac power rankings. Tell me down below if you agree, disagree, where would you move somebody, and I will talk to you guys later.